Hello everyone. Uh, it's a beautiful, sunny, but chilly, uh, what is the Wednesday morning here in uh, Southeast Tennessee. And uh, last week I recorded a video of swapping out the uh, up-down barrel switch uh, on the LT35 as it was going out on me. Uh, and I noticed uh, the barrel switch for the Ford Reverse uh, needed to be swapped out as well. Uh, it had been giving me intermittent issues. Uh, it seemed to be okay when everything was warmed up, but uh, finally it just got to a point where it, it just doesn't want to go in reverse. Um, and now it's, it's starting to do it in forwards. And so, of course, I ordered one from Wood Miser and got it this morning, and that's what I'm going to go through swapping out uh, now. Uh, so, first things first, uh, just like with before, um, you're going to disconnect your battery. Uh, you don't want any juice flowing through there when you're messing with this stuff. Uh, if you short something, uh, you can fry your electronics, uh, give yourself a little bit of a shock. So, let's disconnect the battery and then we'll get this panel open and we'll get this thing swapped out. Hopefully this solves the problem and it's not a problem with the motor. But I do know that it's bad. <laughs> I know that for a fact. And when I get it out of there, I'll try to show you exactly what it is uh, that I'm certain <laughs> is the problem. Um, this will be, in all honesty, the third Ford reverse barrel switch I've put in here. But, and I just dropped that washer. Both of them. Oh well, there's one. I've got more in the shop if I need to. Oh, there it is. So take that panel off. Two washers, two wing nuts. And then we're good. And then we can get in here. We can just take the positive terminal off. Of course, it's not the socket that I thought it was. You should know by now doing this. I'm just going to take the hot lead off of here, make sure it's not touching, put our nut and bolt back on, or not our nut and bolt, our nut and washer, leave that on there. So that's not touching, there should be no juice whatsoever flowing through our panel. Set this out of the way. First things first, we've got to take the uh, control arm off, it's a flathead or a slotted screw. Just undo that one. Um, <clears throat> the kit that you order from Wood Miser has a new handle and a new screw to go with it. So if you lose this, it's not that big a deal. But try not to lose it. That's all I can say. That way you have a replacement. We're going to pop our Phillips head screws out of here to open up our control panel. Uh oh. We're stripping that one out. Don't want to do that. I need to replace all of these screws anyhow, so I might actually go get some today. Okay, so here we are. Um, while I've got it open here, one pro tip that I'll tell you that is invaluable, 
or has been invaluable to me is these little magnetic nine foot tape measures. I keep usually two, uh, I don't know where the other one is gone, but I keep one of these up here and then I don't have to try to keep track of a tape measure on my belt. Um, you know, if you have one on your pocket or something like that, you bump it, it falls off. I usually have a loggers tape on my hip as well. I've got a new one on order. The one I've got is shot. Uh, but loggers tapes don't measure in sixteenths of an inch. They only measure in eighths and inches. However, this these tapes actually measure in 30 seconds. So 30 seconds, 64 and eighths. And I use these things for everything. Checking my cut widths, checking my cut thicknesses, lengths on materials, you name it. And they're magnetic, so it just lives right underneath there. When I close the cover, it stays there. Don't have to keep up with it. And if I'm bouncing around a lot, I might stick it to the side. It stays there pretty good. So yeah, for a couple of bucks at, um, I think L Home Depot has these. I'm, I don't think I've seen them at Lowe's, but I think Home Depot has these. I usually pick them up a few at a time because they're tape measures. You lose them, they break, something goes wrong with them, you name it. The, uh, the actual markings start coming off is what it is. Anyway, so... We got our screws out. We're going to pull back our cover. Remember, I'm going to leave it attached. I've got a tiny chainsaw in my pocket. It's easy to start it, but it's hard to start. Okay. So you pull this off. Make sure you be gentle with it. You don't want to pull any of these wires out by accident. Um, I just pull it back and let it rest on these clips. Uh, if it's in the way of what you're trying to do, then you can take it off the clips and then move it out of the way. But I find that just sitting right there is usually enough to be able to do what it is that I need to do in here. Um, so what I'm gonna do first before anything else is uh, I'm gonna move the camera so that you can see down in here and see what it is that I'm doing. Um, and so we'll get you resituated so that you can see, and then we'll go from there. Okay, hopefully my phone doesn't fall out, and hopefully um, I don't keep bumping the camera stand. <laughs> so, we'll see. All right, so this is the up, down, or I'm sorry, the forward reverse control um, barrel switch. This is the up down that I just replaced. Um, we're going to swap this one out for the brand new one right here. Now, before I go crazy and undo everything over here, I'm going to actually migrate these wires from the existing switch over to the new switch. And there's really only one way that you could put this thing in. This connects to the to control lever. So, you know, it has to, of course, go outside. But if for some reason it's not made properly or you get confused about it, um, if you look down here, you can just see them. Uh, each terminal is actually labeled 135, 2, 4, and 6. Up front here, uh, towards the operator, you have 1, 3, and 5. So that's 2, 4, and 6 on the back which means that we need to migrate those wires from those terminals to these terminals and make sure that we put them in the right place. So, I'm gonna do these one at a time. And this is just a, a flathead screwdriver or slotted screwdriver. Just break that loose. I should be able to slide that out. I might actually have to undo that some more. And this might actually have to go over here. I don't like doing that. It put strain on all those wires, but I'm not disconnecting everything. So just be careful. If you have to set it off to the side, that's fine, but be careful and make sure that you're not putting undue strain on all these wires and connections. 
I'm just gonna take that one out. So that one came out of five. I'm gonna undo five right here. And I'm going to drop that one in, make sure it's seated nicely. And then, oh, come on, sit down in there. All right, there we go. Now we're doing position three. Ah. Take that one out. Undo position three here. That down in there. Tighten that one down. All right. And mm, there we go. Now we do position one. Now position one actually goes from the fuse to the controller. Uh, so make sure that you don't get this sucker wrapped around the back side of it or twisted up with the green wires. And then we get that one on there. All right, so let's got those done. So now there are, let's see, one, two, three. We've got three wires on the back side back here, but we can't really get to them until we actually pull this out. So on the side over here, there are two uh, slotted screws, flathead screws, whatever it is that you want to call them. We're going to take those out there and when we do there are two washers on this screw again you get new ones in the package with the new uh, switch but if you're like me having the spares around is always a good idea so I try not to lose these things All right, so those two are out. So I can pull this forward. Now, rotate it 90 degrees and be gentle when you do. Uh, you've got a ground wire that comes out from the control panel here, um, and it's a very short wire. Um, your blue wire and your red wires are relatively short, so you can't yank this thing out of here. You just have to twist it. But when you twist it, make sure that you can see which numbers uh, your wires connect to. So again, I'm gonna do them one at a time. Uh, so position six is the black wire. So I'm gonna take and undo that one. And then that one's gonna to go to the position six on the back here. go all right and then we're going to take four which is the blue wire that one in there Go ahead and loosen that one up. Now our last one is position two. There are two wires that connect to position two right here. One smaller one. Oh, nope, sorry. Three wires. 
There are three of them in there. Sorry. So, get that undone there. And that screw comes out. And there we go. Now these suckers are a little mangled. I'm just gonna gently redo these. Squeeze them in just a little bit. Flatten them out a little bit. Just a little cleaning and housekeeping, that's all. If they're bent out a little bit, that's not really that big of a deal. So, all right, so we're gonna go back to position two over here, rotate. Undo this one a little bit. All right, so this is gonna be the pain. So you've got one thicker gauged wire and then two smaller ones. Go ahead and put that in there. Just one turn, just like that. And then settle that one in there. And then that one in there as best I can and then get that one in there hold on All right, and then just tighten that one down, just like that. And then we'll adjust it in a minute. Okay, so I've got them in there. It's not pretty. I wanna make sure that everything's getting good connection. So I'm barely gonna loosen that up just a little bit and try to make sure that all of these get seated in there properly. If they don't, I don't want it to short or arc or anything like that or not draw enough power or whatever. So I'm going to tighten that down just like that. It's like everything's getting good connection. That might be pressing on that, but I don't know. I don't care. All right. So it looks okay. You can make sure that all these got snug down. I don't want them to slip out. Those are good. Flip her over. Snug. Snug and snug. All right, so it's got those. So we just roll it back over like that and slide that sucker on. And now to look on the outside. So here are two screw holes. These are the tapped holes that match up with the two outside holes here. I'm just gonna slide that into place. I'm actually gonna get my new control arm or lever, whatever it is that you wanna call it. And inside of that package, this is the package you get. And there's your screws. Take those. And now this one, so the, the round, all right, it's gonna be difficult to see. So this screw here holds the handle on while these screws actually hold the control lever on. But these screws in this package don't have washers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the washers off of the old ones. I know where I put them. There they are. And again, you could reuse the old screws, it's not a problem. 
but I'm going to put new ones in. No reason not to. Down. All right. Line this sucker up just like that. That one in there, and I'm not going to tighten this one all the way down. Just get it on there so that I can rotate this so that that second screw hole matches up. And then this one off ever so slightly. So I'm loosen this one back up and see if I got just a little bit of play in it. Well, not really. So it looks like these two holes are actually just out of alignment. So let's hope that that doesn't cause us to cross thread or anything. All right, and now we're on there. I'll back you up just a little bit. So, this screw here, that screw there. All right. And now our new switch arm, control arm, lever, whatever it is that you want to call it. I'm sure there's a technical term somewhere. I'm not sure what it is. All right, and that feels good. That feels real good. Okay, so this comes pre-lubricated with dielectric grease, but there's not very much on there. And it, realistically, it doesn't take very much at all. Um, there's probably actually more on this one than what needs be, but I can see like it's rubbing on this piece of metal and that piece of metal right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and go get just a little bit more dielectric and then we'll get this buttoned up and test it out. Okay, so here's the old one. Um, if you look at this contact here, okay, that's sort of kind of what it should look like, although there's some wear right here. Okay, so this is like, you know, copper plated, doohickey. <laughs> That's what I'll call it. So roughly this is what it's supposed to look like. This has got wear right here. Now this one's got wear on it, but look at that. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Come on. There we go. Look at how worn down that actually is. Look at that. I'm hoping that that's just worn through the embedded copper in there, and that's what was causing my problem. We'll see in a minute. Let's get that on there. Get the camera rolling again on the tripod. That up there. All right, so now... We need to reconnect our battery. There we go. We'll do that. And then we got to put some gas in her. And I got to cut a couple of two by fours for a guy that just showed up. And then our two washers and our two wing nuts. Okay. 
All right, so that's on there now. Now we need to fill her up with gas. Now if you don't have one of these cans, I know that uh, Nathan Elliott from Out of the Woods showed you one of these cans uh, a while back. Uh, these cans are absolutely invaluable. I love this can. This spout just rotates down, sticks down in there, hold that lever down, and just wait for it to fill it up. And they make these for gas and they make them for uh, diesel. I think the diesel ones are yellow. Um, they're pretty expensive for a gas can. They're like 50, I want to say like $55 or something like that. But man, they are worth it. Do, 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 do. Right, we'll get this. I don't even need a full tank of gas. There's not a full tank of gas in this can right now. I mixed two cycle. Yeah, I mixed two cycle the other day. Um, and I used a couple of gallons out of this. Well, I guess I can tell you, um, the can is fantastic. There's one problem that I have with it and I'll show you in just a minute. This is the second one of these that I've had and both of them had the same problem. The last one got crushed, <laughs> uh, on a job site and got run over by a tractor. It's not fun because there was gas everywhere. And, uh, the customer paid for a new can because it was their fault, their accident, not mine. Um, but both of these had the exact same problem. I'll show you here in just a second. Okay, so uh, let me get around here. Okay, so where this can fills up from right here, if you crack this open. You look underneath here, probably can't see it very well in this light, but there is a rubber O-ring that lives down in here that is what actually creates the seal. You see it right there? Both of these cans, that O-ring went out within months of having the can. So when I fill this up, if I fill it up higher than, you know, right here, which isn't a full five gallons, uh, it actually leaks from in there. Both cans did that. All right, we got that done, got that swapped out. I'm gonna go turn the dust collection on and then cut these two by fours for this customer and then uh, get back to the other stuff that I need to do. So give me just a couple of minutes.
and we're done. We'll see you on the next one.